I do think that the uh, abortion as an issue will be losing its, uh, its power for Democrats. But also keep in mind that in Florida, in Ohio, and a handful of other states, the pro-life governors who signed pro-life legislation, they won easily in 2022, mm -hmm. notably Mike DeWine in, in Ohio. Right. And so it's not true that abortion is always a loser for Republicans and pro-lifers, but it has in general been a winner for the pro-choice side. Welcome to The Debrief, where we talk with the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the headlines they're covering and where the story's going next. I'm Sarah Bedford, and I'm here with senior columnist Tim Kearney. And Tim, a candidate in Georgia this past week just lost his election, and he had run primarily on abortion. Tell us what happened there. What's the significance of that? It, it was strictly on abortion. So mm -hmm. um, in Georgia, you can challenge as uh, sitting judges go up for re-election. They normally don't draw a challenge. John Barrow is a former five-term Democratic congressman. His father was a judge, actually. Mm -hmm. And he put up a challenge just on the basis of abortion. Like his signs said, vote for choice. He would mark, march with pink shirts that said, you know, mm -hmm. defending women's health care rights. His money came in from Planned Parenthood and from NARAL. And it was simply an abortion campaign. Now, the thing is, Democrats say this because they've mostly been winning in the past. But in this one, he lost by 10 points, 55-45. So it was just an out-and-out -out win for the pro-life side, which is not something we've seen a lot since Roe v. Wade was overturned two years ago. Right. In the midterms, it was a very potent issue for Democrats, broke the red wave that everyone expected to see. And abortion laws haven't really gotten much more clear over the past few years since then. But... Do you think that the issue is starting to lose its potency now? I think certainly there, um, the uh, pro-choice groups have reported a that the anger donations they got mm -hmm. have have dropped off, and eventually, what the pro-life side said would happen with an overturn of Roe was when you return things to democracy, eventually they'll settle into some sort of equilibrium, mm -hmm. and that that's where we're heading towards now. So we go from these sort of, you know, massive changes, total unpredictability, to eventually we'll have a range from, Maryland, for instance, has on the ballot this year something to make it a constitutional right to mm -hmm. an abortion, and it's pretty extreme. And then on another far end, we'll have total bans, and there'll be some states, you know, not, in, not many in the middle, but on either side. So yes, I do think that the ab abortion as an issue will be losing its, uh, its power for Democrats, but also keep in mind that in Florida, in Ohio, and a handful of other states, the pro-life governors who signed pro-life legislation, they won easily in 2022, mm -hmm. notably Mike DeWine in, in Ohio. Right. And so it's not true that abortion is always a loser for Republicans and pro-lifers, but it has in general been a winner for the pro-choice side. Donald Trump has come out and said he wouldn't sign a national ban. He wants this to be a state's issue. Do you think he's neutralized it for himself in a general election, which is obviously different than the GOP primary? Or do you think this will be an issue for him? I mean, I think he's, um, he, his, he's playing it safe. Mm -hmm. In other words, it would be good to have, from my pro-life perspective, a national right. leader saying we should ban it on the national level as much as we can and let states restrict it even more. Because again, in a state like Maryland, they're making it legal to have abortion, a constitutional right to have abortion right up to the last minute. Right. There should be a line drawn there is what the pro-life argument is, but he's not going to lose pro-life votes in the general election for taking that moderate stance. And he's worried about suburban voters. So it is playing it safe. There are a lot of people who think, okay, well, Roe v. Wade, if overturning that was right, it was to throw it back to the states, and so Congress should just stay out of it. So it is a safe way to go, even though it's not the real pro-life position. And finally, you've gotten at this a little bit, but there's kind of two schools of thought about how Republicans should approach this. One is that they should just not talk about it. It doesn't make them look good. It's not popular. And one is that they should not let Democrats set the narrative about abortion. Mm -hmm. They should be on offense. Do you think offense or defense for Republicans has proven most effective for abortion? I, I think that, so it's, it's funny to say on offense because on culture, cultural issues, what I've always said is whoever looks like they are obsessed with an issue mm -hmm. often tends to lose. Like mm -hmm. even people in places where immigration or abortion or whatever, even if they're with the majority, if they look obsessed with it, they're going to lose. Mm -hmm. And so for I think that Republicans avoiding the issue is a mistake because if nobody's standing up and saying, actually, 
life begins at conception and the job of the government is to protect the vulnerable, such as unborn babies, mm -hmm. then that argument loses its salience. That doesn't mean you have to campaign on it, but to avoid the issue and not talk about it, I think is a big mistake. So, uh, you know, nobody asked me my opinion on how to run, <laughs> but it would be articulate the pro-life uh, stance, but if you're in a very pro-choice state, don't lead with it. Well, Tim, thank you so much for being here today. You can get more writing from Tim and the rest of the commentary team at WashingtonExaminer.com.